Hello and welcome to Path Made Easy. Today's case is fairly straightforward. It's an example of hyperkeratosis and epithelial hyperplasia affecting the buccal mucosa within the oral cavity. So this biopsy, like many of our biopsies, has been stained with hematoxylin and eosin. You can see the epithelium over the surface. Beneath that is the lamina propria. And finally, at the deep aspect of the biopsy, we have a submucosa. Now the buccal mucosa is an example of lining mucosa, so it's not normally keratinized. If we look at this end of the biopsy, we can see there's a thin layer of keratin. So even here, um, the epithelium isn't completely normal. But as we progress along the length of the biopsy, hopefully you can appreciate that the thickness of keratin has increased markedly. When we zoom in, we can see that these keratinized layers contain nuclei. So that tells me that this is para-keratin. If there were no nuclei within the keratin, it would be called orthokeratin. We can also see that the reti pegs are elongated. You could also describe them as being hyperplastic or better still acanthotic because we have an increase in the prickle cell layers. So you can use any of those terms really. Beneath that in the lamina propria, I can identify several capillaries, but largely the connective tissue has a normal appearance and is uninflamed. Moving down into the submucosa, we can see bundles of striated muscle and also collections of adipocytes. If you are worrying if this could be dysplasia, I am reassured because the reti pegs are nice and long and pointy. They certainly don't have a bulbous architecture. And when we zoom in, I can see that the epithelial layers stratify normally to the surface and I certainly don't have any evidence of nuclear or cellular pleomorphism or increased mitotic rate, for example. So in summary, this is a case of hyperkeratosis and epithelial hyperplasia on the buccal mucosa. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel Path Made easy. Thank you.